Um, you uh, mentioned in your witness summary that uh, OPS would not have been able to manage the or resolve effectively the convoy occupation in Ottawa uh, without the invocation of the Emergencies Act, correct? So I think my, my, at the time of my statement, I was under the impression that uh, things like uh, tow trucks, that was the only way we were going to be able to, to get them. Um, I may be corrected by Superintendent Bernier. I think they did have some lined up and they were on their way just prior to us beginning our, um, our actions. But I think, um, as I stated before, that I think the Emergencies Act um, made us more confident in, in the approach we were taking and enabled us to, um, you know, get, get past uh, the issues of whether it was the seizing of, of assets. I think that was helpful in terms of setting a tone for some of the people who may be uh, deterred by that. Uh, and the tow trucks specifically was the, the piece that I remember being um, very helpful. And, you know, the red zone, we were, we were moving in there regardless, but uh, the Emergencies Act was helpful. I'd like to ask about the integrated planning team that came to Ottawa. I believe they arrived on or about February 8th. Is that about your recollection? Sounds right, yep. Yeah. And I believe your evidence was that you fully supported the concept of an integrated planning team? Yes. Uh, you were aware, of course, that uh, Toronto Police was involved. York, Peel, you had subject matter experts from a number of police services? Yes. And would you agree that this was not the B team, right? And they were all coming to, get to Ottawa to help the OPS kind of resolve the situation, correct? And I was very grateful for them, yes. But is it fair to say that your enthusiasm or your support wasn't shared entirely by all, all members of OPS Senior Command? That's fair. And finally, on the point of jurisdiction. Once the convoy arrived in Ottawa, you would agree to the obvious proposition, but it's worth repeating that Ottawa Police Service was the police service of jurisdiction, correct? Yes, we were which meant that at that point, it was no longer the OBP's responsibility, jurisdictionally. Yes, yeah, it was ours. And in fact, it would have been improper for the OBP to try to step in and kind of take over policing, correct? Agreed. And one of those would be if a formal request would be made from the OPS chief to the OBP commissioner, correct? I think that's how it works, yes. Although no such request was made in this case, correct? I would have been surprised if it was. I don't know, though, for sure. So I didn't hear you? I, I, I don't know if it was made or not. No, but did you say it would, you'd be surprised? I would have been surprised if the request was made. Why would you have been surprised? Because I don't think that that's what um, former Chief Slowly was wanted. Why? I think you'd have to ask him. <laughs> it, it was clear to me that the, he was pushing back on, on that. Oh, I'm asking you, though, because you have a lot, you've had a lot of dealings with Chief Slowly. Mm -hmm. So... Why, in your opinion and in your experience, do you believe Chief Slowly uh, would have refused to consider or would, have, would not have entertained the possibility of asking for formal assistance in that way? I don't believe he wanted to give up control. I think he felt that this, he was the chief in the, in the police jurisdiction and he wanted that to be maintained. By that, uh, you, I understand you're later suggesting that by prolonged period, you just meant like the long weekend. Yes. Uh, but isn't it true, Deputy Chief, that by that time, there were, in fact, all kinds of, I would suggest, uh, glaring indicators that these protesters were coming here for a very prolonged period. Isn't that fair? So there were indicators. Was I aware of them at that time on the 26th when I made that statement? Uh, I, I, I don't believe I was. Uh, but prolonged, in my experience, being you know, a police officer in the Capitol for 27 years, prolonged was a weekend for a protest. But this one was different, Deputy Chief. You had a very, very large number of trucks that were coming from a long distance, right, from, from Western Canada, correct? Yes, and we'd had a similar one, um, I believe, in 2019. Yeah, some of the fo same folks involved, yes, I think. Yes, We might hear about that later uh, in these hearings. But n nowhere near the numbers, correct? Well, the numbers were something that was fluctuating as they traveled across the country. Um, and even right up until the, you know, the three days prior to them arriving in Ottawa, um, my understanding is the Hendon reports had three different numbers, somewhere in the four, high 400s, then five and a half, and then uh, ultimately 1,300, I think was the last number that we had 
prior to them arriving here. And um, also that the protesters had no exit strategy. You weren't, but you weren't aware of that at the beginning. Uh, no, not at the beginning. And, and, you know, to be fair, I think there were comments saying that they were planning on leaving after the weekend. And then other ones that said the fourth, I think, was given as a date. And then there was also information that there was no exit strategy for some of them were planning to stay. But you would agree with me, Deputy Chief, there were some indicators that they were prepared to come here for a number of weeks, perhaps. I would agree, yeah. And um, at the time of the first weekend, at least at that time, unfortunately, the Ottawa Police Service did not have a contingency plan about how to manage that uh, for several weeks if we had a few hundred trucks parked in downtown Ottawa. Yeah, we did not. Um, good afternoon, Deputy Chief Ferguson. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Champ. I'm the lawyer for the Ottawa Co Coalition for Residents and Businesses, and I want to thank you very much for coming today to answer some of our questions. Um, I want to start, uh, Deputy Chief Ferguson, asking you about uh, the decision to allow uh, the heavy trucks to come downtown uh, right at the outset. Now, we've heard previous evidence uh, from the city manager, Mr. Kanalakos, and the mayor and, and Chair Deans that uh, the, the police were telling them that the, it was the opinion of the Ottawa Police Service that you could not prevent the heavy trucks from going downtown because of the charter rights of those truckers. Uh, was that your understanding of what the Ottawa Police were telling the City of Ottawa officials? Yes. And uh, was that a legal opinion that the Ottawa Police obtained? I don't remember if we obtained a legal opinion on that. Um, I believe this was based on decades of of past you know experience in managing events and that we have allowed it in the past and we're going to again in this case notwithstanding the dramatically larger scale and the larger number of like heavy trucks yeah i think we have had uh trucks and uh as previously alluded to tractors in that area of the downtown um it's obviously the sought after spot where people come to protest and this idea of vehicle protests or vehicles associated with protests, you've told us the auto police service has had some experience with that before. Um, has uh, the Ottawa police uh, is sought input or guidance or uh, expertise from other police services about how they manage large vehicle protests? Not to my knowledge. Uh, now that it's possible, I know there is a, a whole network of officers who um, you know, go to conferences on public order things, and, and I have been to one of those, so there, there may be a network, and that might have happened already. There, there might be police services reaching out to OPS now after this oh, event, yes, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I understand your testimony earlier, there were only two ways in which the invocation of the Emergencies Act was of use to police in ending the freedom movement protests. One, it bypassed the requirement to swear in officers from other jurisdictions, which saved a bit of time. And two, it helped to procure the services of heavy rig tow truck operators. Is that a fair characterization of your testimony? Of my testimony, yes. I yes. do believe, though, um, the seizing of assets was also helpful. The, uh, can Seize you expand on that? Uh, so the threat of seizing assets of um, oh, right. bank accounts and uh, rigs and things like that. Okay. Uh, useful, but not necessary. Yeah, useful, but not necessary. Um, how much time did not having to swear in officers from other jurisdictions actually save? I don't know. Could you give, uh, would it be on the order of hours or days or? Um, probably hours. Uh, and I don't know how many of them we had already done at that point in time, but uh, so, a number of hours, administrative, uh, probably, you know, people being involved in that and filing paperwork. And right. So it sidesteps some paperwork and headaches and a few hours. Yeah. All right.